How's it going everyone? I'm Jeremy and welcome to another video. I know it's been a really long time since I made something, uh, but I'm going to try and do a little series on Game Maker. I want to show you some of the similarities between Construct and Game Maker and why I think you might like using it. So in Construct, when we're making something, we're using events and actions. So I actually just want to show you a very simple uh, way that we can replicate this. So what I have here in Construct 3 uh, is a sprite named player with the eight direction behavior and it has a max speed and acceleration. I've limited the directions to four. We do not set the angle. We're not using the default controls because I've actually programmed them. I've broken them down. So we have W, A, S, and D, and then we have the arrow keys. And all they're doing is simulating up, right, left, down. Now, this is great because when I play this, it works right out of the box. It's extremely easy. It's all set up and done for me. And then, you know, there's certain things here with the acceleration that I'd need to tweak to make it feel a little bit better, but I didn't have to program anything. <laughs> didn't have to type anything out. All I have are these events and these actions in one event sheet. So how do we replicate this in Game Maker? It's actually, you know, easier than you might think. So... I'm going to show you how we can do that, and I'm going to show you pretty quickly. So I'm going to try not to uh, slow down a whole lot. I'm going to try to do this pretty quickly. And I'm just going to color this in. Set the... Well, that I didn't mean to do. I'm not going to try and rush this. Set this uh, origin point to the center, and then create a corresponding object. So right off the bat, this is something that is separated uh, that's not done in Construct is we separate our objects and our sprites. Uh, and I think this is actually a better way to do it, um, but it is a little bit of a two-step process that might be something you're not familiar with. But something that you are familiar with is events, right? We just did that, or I just showed you um, an event and then an action. And the event in case of Construct is keyboard W is down or keyboard right arrow is down. We can replicate that in Game Maker by going to Add Event, Key Down, Key Right. It's the exact same thing. The only thing is we don't have a behavior attached to this player object that like we would in Construct. We have to do that on our own. And the behavior that we need in this example is very, very, very simple. So if we go to the room before we program anything, if we go to our room, this is like our layout. Um, we'll have two layers, an instances and a background layer. I'll make this background layer a little bit lighter, and then I'll go back to the instances layer and drag our player on it so you can actually see it. So when I click and drag this player object on here, you're gonna notice that it gives it coordinates, X and Y, 448 and 320. So what we wanna do here, instead of simulating control as the action, we actually need to move that X position. So if we're moving to the right, we need to add pixels to the right, just like so. So we're going to add, and by uh, putting the equal sign there, we're going to keep adding it every single time we hold down the right arrow key. This is like saying x uh, equals x plus 3. It's just shorthand for that by doing plus equals 3. So if I go and hit play, you're going to notice that when I hold down the right arrow key, it does the exact same thing that it would in Construct. It really isn't that difficult. But we could keep going and we could, you know, key down left and then do X minus equals three. But this is going to become a little bit of a process. And while it does work this way, there's a even more, or there's just a preferred way that a lot of game maker programmers like to do their their code. But this is totally valid and this is the exact same thing that we just did in Construct. The way to do it in Game Maker though that everybody else seems to like is to put everything into the step event for that object. So unlike in Construct, every single object gets their own step event. And this step event runs every frame of the game. The equivalent of this is the every tick where in Construct we would have um, an every tick event in the system and that would just run for the game. This is saying we have that available to us for every single object. So now you're probably wondering how do we actually move this from here? 
And there's actually a bunch of ways to write this code. So instead of the key down being an event, we can actually make it part of the action. If you didn't figure this out, instead of having an action that we can just click and put here, we're coding the actions. We're actually controlling that. So in our step event, we can write an if statement or a conditional for our keyboard check VK left, just like this. And then I can select it all and duplicate it. And then I can switch this one to VK right. And then I can do the exact same code. X minus equals three, X plus equals three. And just like that, we have the exact same code. Instead of actually using these as events, we have these all in one event, the step event. So does this give you more control? I mean, yeah, it does. I think you can then start to bundle things more so in these events than you would have access to. And it also kind of tells us what's going on behind the scenes rather than us just tweaking properties and getting to know it. Now, the other thing that you'll notice in GameMaker is that GameMaker language is very forgiving. You'll notice I probably could, I, I forgot this on purpose, put a parenthesis there, like so. So depending on what kind of programmer you are, depending on what you're used to, if you've never programmed before, there's ways for that to get used to it. For example, you can write an if statement uh, like so, and then have it work like this, where this is the first line, this is the second line, it'll run. This is actually a valid if statement in GameMaker, whereas all of these are valid as well. Could also put the brackets down here. And so what makes it a good next step if you're looking for something else to use is there's a lot of different ways you can learn how to program or just learn programming logic for the very first time uh, with actual code and it kind of just bends to the style that you like the most. So I wrote both of these, um, and now we can just kind of also put in their corresponding things. The way that it works for the y-axis is actually backwards than you might think, where if we're going up, we're going, we're subtracting, and if we're going down, we're adding. It's just kind of a game maker thing. It's the way that their grid is set up. But now, with just a couple lines of code, I've replicated what we've made in Construct. Pretty simple. And if for whatever reason you were uncomfortable with doing it this way, you can just keep adding events for key down, up, and down. And to be honest, it's probably a bit quicker because um, then you're just adding in one line of code rather than having 15. But like I said, organizing it this way is kind of helpful and it's all in one space. So the final thing I want to show you here is just that, yeah, I hard coded in how, how many pixels were moving. And that's, you know, that's generally something you don't do in programming. So I can go into the create event and just make a variable that belongs to this object. And this is the old way of doing it in GameMaker. And I still kind of prefer doing it this way where the create event happens when that object is created. We have an equivalent to that. Uh, is it in here? Yeah on created, there's our create event for our player in construct. Um, and on created, we're setting all of these variables that are specific to the player. Another way we can do that, which is actually probably more similar to construct, is having our own little variable definitions bank here, where I can kind of go in and then just give it any type of variable, really. There's a real, there's a decimal, integer, string, boolean, expression, and the, and the list goes on, it's pretty cool. Uh, this is more akin to going into the project, clicking on the player, going into the properties, and then going into the instance variables here, and then adding it, you know, there as a number. So this gives us more control. Um, I don't actually like doing it that way yet. I'm still getting used to that. But putting it right in the create event means that on creation of this object, the second I run this room, I want you to give the player its own instance variable. It's built in, it's my built in speed variable. And then I'll come in here and then I'll just replace these values because that's better programming. And that way, if I ever wanted to change it from three pixels, I now only have to change it one time over here. And there we go, that updates. I just made it slower. But I hope this demonstrates how easy it actually is to program these things in GameMaker and how similar it is to Construct. 
The reason why I want to do a couple videos on GameMaker is because I just want to show you that GameMaker language has a lot more to offer in terms of actual gameplay uh, mechanics and code. And some of the functions and built in, yeah, the built in methods in GameMaker are all about making your game fun. They're, they're helper functions. Whereas if we're really customizing the behaviors in Construct and GameMaker, then GameMaker lets us drag and drop these methods that we would have to customize in Construct. So it's a little backwards, but there's a lot to offer from GameMaker. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope it wasn't too fast or too slow. And if you liked it, just let me know in the comments below uh, what you want to see. I'm going to make a couple more of these. I want to show you another way to do movement, and I want to show you some collision work and some camera stuff that should just make it a lot easier for you to transition if you're looking to get into it. But I think the bottom line is whatever software you like and are comfortable with and are happy to use, then just use that and make a game with that. You by no means have to use the next best thing. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.